Okay, welcome back. Um, I, just to uh, reiterate another announcement that I had uh, mentioned in the beginning of the earlier class, that um, uh, there would be an assessment that will be put up in this coming uh, a week which needs to be completed. This uh, comes to the add-on of your uh, marks for your final score. So please do ensure that all of you attempt the assessment. The assessment will be based on the first five chapters that we've done um, uh, up until now. It, it will not um, it will not be applicable for the last chapter we did on communication. It's only the first five chapters, so please do be prepared. And uh, th they, they will be a, a set of questions which are multiple choice questions. So it will come up uh, on your uh, classroom. It will be there on the, on the stream. And you just need to click it and ensure that you've completed the test before the due date. Okay. All right. Okay. So um, we've we've been looking at the elements of a good marriage, and we just uh, finished our uh, understanding on communication. We're going to be coming to something that is um, uh, that's again an, a, another very important aspect of uh, of of marriage is knowing how to resolve conflicts, knowing how to resolve conflicts or conflict resolution. OK, um, now conflicts, as we all know, are inevitable. It is something that is normal. It is natural. It's something that happens at every in, in every relationship. Yes, and, and, and I am sure all of us do agree. So even in marriage, even though we may desire to have uh, you know, a relationship or a marriage that is um, away from conflict. Uh, there are times that you will find yourself in arguments, in quarrels, in disagreements, which could be very simple, something as simple as, like, uh, I think Avni and I were talking about, um, you know, last time was maybe having a wet towel on the bed or even something that is quite intense in itself, which could lead to a lot of disappointment and pain and hurt and um, uh, strife within the relationship. Okay, So it is common in marriage. Um, so what we are looking at is not to have a marriage which is conflict-free. That, I think, is it's, it's abnormal. You, you know, where there are two people, there are going to come, there are ways, there are going to be conflicts. But the goal of this chapter is to understand how do we handle these conflicts? How do we navigate through arguments and disagreements that may come about? And that's the essence of what we, we're going to be learning. So it's a skill. Learning how to manage our conflicts is a skill. Okay, um, maybe we'll just quickly, uh, probably a two minute time to share. Why do you think conflicts happen? What are some of the reasons conflicts happen in your homes? Just to ensure that all of us are awake and we're all here. You can put it up on the chat. Y'all don't have conflicts at home? Oh, OK, great. OK, I'm, I'm getting some. OK, someone said, uh, Sri Kumar said, misunderstanding. Samuel said, ideological differences. OK, I think the, some people put up their hands. Um, OK, or just how we were raised up. OK, I think Shay, I think I, I thought I saw your hand. Food preferences. Wow, OK. All right. Uh, she? Oh, it's been, different uh, priorities. Different, different cultural backgrounds. Different cultural backgrounds. How you've been brought up. Your viewpoint of life. Oh. <laughs> okay. And sometimes okay. ignorant. Too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. So different cultural backgrounds. Lack of understanding. Cultural differences. What else? What else has been common at your homes? Culture. Okay. Really, Tarun? Okay. 
dressing styles okay interesting oh, who's going to have the last word is that it rupa okay laziness lack of sensitivity towards others uh, okay, not having a clarity in the responsibilities that we have. Okay, we being North and South Indian. Okay, difference in cultures. Okay, anything more? Anything else? Any any other reason why uh, conflicts do occur? Yeah. So so if you look at it, there are very many uh, reasons that you can you can parental styles. Yes, I was actually waiting for that. Yeah, upbringing of a child. Yes, the the way that you you feel a child needs to be brought up. So there could be very many reasons why conflicts do occur. Factors of money, yes. Even um, uh, th there can be even parental influence or influence of in-laws, right? Or priorities. Or um, I've, I've, uh, you know, we've uh, we've seen couples who've had doctrinal. Uh, differences that give rise to conflict. So conflicts can occur in so many different um, ways and certain reasons. So in in short, a lot of this happens because uh, when when we uh, conflicts do happen because we are different. There is a there is a difference in the way that um, not just the way that we we are in our personalities, but there are so many factors that makes us different that can be uh, and we're different in so many different ways you know it could be biologically it can be physiologically in the way that we think the way that we problem solve the way that we uh, emote so there are a huge number of differences between uh, a man and a woman that in itself can cause conflicts and of course there are those uh, many of those um, uh, issues that we spoke about other factors that we we, we were talking about so I, one of the uh, um, one way in in how you can minimize or bring down uh, conflicts is first of all to build an understanding of these differences that are there okay that uh, that we have been created with and sometimes just understanding this in itself can help to bring down expectations or it helps to resolve certain ideas or why the person has said certain uh, way and certain things in itself it, it really balances that out so what we're going to just quickly look at is to understand some of these differences okay then some of this um, even as you read through this you may find um, uh, some are quite uh, you know it's also scientific that it is also understood quite scientifically that there are these differences so there are some uh, innate differences and to begin with um, and and usually the class has a good laugh at this one just to understand that anatomically uh, we are even our brains are very different okay so the the male brain is um, is is much although it's thicker and strong it's much smaller than the than than the ones of the of, of the woman. Um, if ever y'all are interested, you know there is the series by a Christian pastor, um, and his name is Mark Ganga, M A R K Mark Ganga, G U N G O R, and it is on YouTube. And he has an entire series of um, uh, of this of you know man and woman being different and the way that he articulates it uh, it's wonderful I think if you will ever get some time you know please do go back and uh, uh, watch it maybe I, I think I'll put the link up on the on the stream so that you can you know have a look at it and uh, and and learn from that okay so yeah so so anatomically also the brains are are very different um, women use a lot more of their right brain and men use a lot more they heavily uh, work on their left brain so on their left brain on the left brain is where there is a lot more of problem solving uh, usually tasks that need to be corrected and and found solutions with whereas on the right brain the, uh, you know there is 
um, there is the ability to multitask and being able to do multiple activities at a point of time. So even the way that we use our brains are also scientifically seen to be different. Okay, so if you if you look at the um, uh, you know the women's brain, there are a lot more of uh, neurons that connect with one with each other, and that's why you would you know it would amaze you that most most women and this again may be a generalization. There may be some men who could do this as well. They are very very good at multitasking. You know, you they're probably able to cook a meal. They're able to um, you know talk to a friend. They're able to you know give instructions to their to their kids they're able to um, you know write up uh, a note to their friend all at, at at one go so that's the difference that that you may be seeing whereas the male has one activity at a time uh, one thing at a time complete one and move into the other again this is a generalization so don't get offended if you are not that way uh, but it in scientifically it this is what it, it specific talks about and there are um, you know papers and and uh, there there is a link there is a um, a note in the book for information that you can get if you are interested in understanding these physiological differences okay apart from these physiological differences there are also differences in the way that we uh, we use some psychological process to operate in our lives right so the way that we problem solve the way that we think the way that we feel emote uh, the way that we may be sensitive our memories um, there are th these differences that you would also see so um, if, if you were to take on problem solving you know um, yes both men and women are able to solve problems equally well but the, their way of doing it, their approach to it, so are, are quite different. Uh, men usually problem solve. They they take it as an opportunity to show, um, you know, to express their competence or their strength or their, um, you know, to ensure that you know whenever there is a, a, a something that has to be solved, it is done. So it, it really looks at their competence, their ability to 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 problem solve. Whereas in women, uh, there, there's uh, they usually do it in 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 a in a form of an interaction where uh, you know they would like to share and discuss and uh, uh, bring it out in a relationship that's why you'd see mostly you know when when men and women go through the same problem men would could uh, uh, generally would probably either go out play maybe a football game or they may play a game on their on their mobiles or you know watch uh, a, a soccer match or a cricket match and then they feel that okay you know that's it they, they figured out how they would like to solve their problems whereas women they will immediately call a girlfriend and say hey you know come out for coffee with me and then talk about in length and discuss it and churn it and uh, mash it and and then finally figure that they have uh, that's the way that they they have uh, resolved that issue so it just demonstrates different ways in how um, we may problem solve uh, we are on page 110 Charles we're on page 110 sorry I'm sorry that I didn't uh, think yeah we're on page 110 right so uh, does this resound to people I'm talking to or or is this just my observation and my experience maybe thumbs up or thumbs down or uh, smiley or something will help me see that okay uh, yeah okay thank you sam anybody else or am i am i completely off track yeah okay great okay so I, I know you're here with me. OK, so that's that's some way that we we could problem solve. The uh, another point of ways, how do we uh, process information? How do we think? Right. So when we look at men and women, there is a uh, there is a book uh, by uh, Bill and Pam Farrell. And this book's name is called Men Are Like Waffles and Women Are Like Spaghetti. So what they say is that, you know, men uh, work in compartments like if you've seen a waffle there are these little boxes in the waffles so it does not interlink with one another uh, um, the interconnectedness of one thing in their lives with another is quite limited when they have an issue at work it is an issue at work when there is an issue at home it is an issue at home when there is an issue 
with plumbing, it's an issue with plumbing, right? But whereas for women, they are more like noodles or spaghetti that one thing runs into another. So much so that uh, uh, an issue on one part of their lives can affect the other area of their lives. They are so interconnected and it overwhelms um, uh, overwhelms it's it's overwhelmed with 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 uh, the other kind of factors that they're that they are in this in 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 them so um you know something that <clears throat> impacts them at work is bought back home uh you know is is uh, has a bearing on 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 the way that uh, the food is cooked uh, there's a bearing on the way the children uh, maybe do their homework uh, uh, the way that that the that the table is set that day so everything seems to be more interconnected to one another everything seems to be interdependent on one for women whereas for men they focus on one thing at a time and and the more limited number of problems they have to solve the more easier it is for them so they're very linear in the way that they may um, uh, approach a task whereas women could be more cross-sectional it affects different and uh, multiple areas of their lives so these are differences in even in the way that we think so so um, you know often um, you know, men, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, in counseling sessions, we really empathize with men because the women's talking, the woman is talking about a problem and she's bringing everyone around her environment into that problem. And the poor man is really unable to decipher and understand what the neighbor has to do with the fact that, you know, he didn't pay attention to her uh, that morning so everything seems so interconnected and and for the for the man to really decipher and understand that gets difficult so it is important for the woman to understand that they don't work like that they don't connect hundreds of things together they are very very um uh, uh, you know compartmentalized in the way that they think okay um Okay. Yeah. So, so that's that's the thing about uh, thinking. The other is about memory. Um, as as all men would uh, would know and would uh, you know maybe raising their hands up and says you know your wife would probably know what you wore the first time you met her and uh, where you were, what you all ate, what were the words you said, um, you know how you looked, all of that, and if she was to ask you you have absolutely no recollection of what she was wearing yesterday right so women have an ability to recall memories because it is very intertwined in their emotions so all of those events are intertwined in with with the emotions they they remember they recollect things because of the way that they feel about it Okay, so the so experiences or events that have similar emotions have you know come maybe in in a common theme. Whereas men recall events based on the task or the activity or the or some strategy that they used to um, uh, you know that that they remember. They they probably uh, you know a, a remember it because of something that have maybe you know a holiday they remember because okay they went in this blue car and um, uh, or you know there was something that happened there and how um, they, they were able to resolve a situation so so it men recall it very differently from the way women do so you know i think women on the group be more kinder to your men when they are not able to remember uh, things like uh, birthdays or you know special occasions you know do you remember what happened 10 years ago on this date it's a difficult thing that because they are not as emotionally wired as as a woman may be okay so that's that's a difference between memory uh, when you're looking at sensitivity or or the way we react women tend to be more reactive than men are uh, in most cases and that could and whereas uh, men are, uh, um, are are more um, more controlled in their reactions so that's why women are able to uh, build more meaningful relationships 
because of their ability to be sensitive, to empathize, to share, to see others' perspectives and emotions, whereas men connect easily through a shared interest or by doing things together, which most probably will be something that is more active and physical. So if, if you are to peek into a conversation between a group of men and a group of women, uh, let me hear this out. What would the group of men be talking about? What would the group of women be talking about? This is just to ensure that you are all with me. What would the group of men be talking about if you were to peek into their conversation? Say it again faster. Say it again faster. I said, what would the... If you were to peek into a conversation between a group of men and a group of women, what would the group of men be talking about? What would the group of women be talking about? Okay, Anita said, men would talk about matches and games, men talk about sports. Yes, Shay? So women will talk more about dresses, fashion, the last uh, Emmy Awards. But then men, for men, more politics, world politics, football, soccer, cricket. Um, yeah, those kind of things. Making money, investments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Shay. Samuel? Samuel? Okay, uh, okay. Sports. Uh, uh, Charles said men talk talk about sex too. Yes, uh, men talk about how how we can meet again and how. Okay, all right. So what do women talk about? Just uh, women talk about children, food. Okay, men. What do you think women talk about? Women talk about family issues or neighbors. Okay. All right. I'd like some responses from men. Men, what do you think women talk about? Women talk about husbands. <laughs> okay. They gossip. Women, God knows. Men, no woman knows. <laughs> okay. They have no idea about what women talk about. Oh, gosh. Okay. <laughs> women gossip. Uh, I think someone said TV soaps. Okay. Women talk about TV soaps. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. That's interesting. Right. So, so I think you've got you've got the you've got the flair about uh, what conversations happen, right? So, women like to relate to uh, to each other, and any conversation that brings about relationships, that's what they talk about. Men like to talk about uh, you know tasks, things outside. You know, how do people solve it? All of that. So, so that's that's how you see that there there are these differences. Now, why is it important to understand these di differences? You know, it is uh, the the importance is to be able to recognize that, um, uh, or recognize and also know and understand that b these differences can be uh, can be ways in which. Uh, one, we are made, we are wired that way. You know, God has given us these abilities, wired us that way. And it also helps us to um, uh, change our understanding. When we change our understanding, we are able to act correctly. Uh, I'll give you an example. Um, let's say there's a husband and wife having a conflict about something, okay? And uh, often you would you would you should you would generally see that let's say there's a conflict and then you know both of them have walked away, and maybe often the husband probably goes and either sleeps or he watches a game or he may you know get into work. Okay, he gets into that problem solving mode. You know, I'm going to do something about it. Figure a way that I can you know just just problem solve even if it's not that situation just problem solve and i'd be able to deal with it whereas the woman comes back to the man says i want to talk to you i want to talk to you i want to talk to you and you know the, the 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 man is in that position of needing that space to collect himself back uh, and and that causes a conflict in itself so just being able to understand these differences that okay in a conflict at the time of conflict, maybe it is important for the woman to understand he needs time 
to uh, to just settle himself, to regain his thoughts, to come back to some form of normalcy, and for the man to understand, she needs time. She needs a, she needs an open space where she can talk. Okay, so unless and until this understanding happens, we do not know how to act differently. So when we fail to recognize these differences, that's when conflicts arise, and that's when there's frustration, disappointment, there is arguments, and it leads to a breakdown. So while we understand these these differences, we also learn to respect that each of us are different and we serve each other according to the needs that they may be they that they may be portraying just also keeping in mind that even through our differences there are ways that we can come back together to resolve our issues okay so when uh, the, the I, one of the scriptures that specifically talks about this is you know, in First Peter three seven, it says, "In the same way, you husbands, live with your wives with the proper understanding that they are more delicate than you." So, what it means is, be in a place of understanding, not just for husbands but even for wives, and treating them with respect. So, knowing when you have a correct view of differences, you you begin to perceive each other differently. But if you have an incorrect view of differences, it it will lead to uh, disagreements or challenges that that could that could later be more difficult to tease out. Okay, all right. So what happens when when we are in conflict? So what is um, what is your first response when you are when there is a conflict? What happens when there is a conflict? What how do you how do some of us respond here. So something that uh, happens. Um, okay, so the way that I, when when there is a conflict, one of the uh, quickest things for me to do is to shut down. I shut down. Uh, you know, maybe just I don't talk. I don't. I, you know, I I move away from there uh, as a, as an initial response. Okay. So how is it different for, for y'all? Okay, we're all human. Okay, so it's okay that we may not have the best of responses. Okay, my husband shuts down and I'm hovering there to talk. Okay, there. All right. Yes, Shay, was that uh, a hand that you put up earlier or no? I'm not sure. Okay, so how do you respond when there are conflicts? Yes, Shay, oh, go on. No, sorry, I put my hand earlier, sorry. But, okay. uh, but, but I can share mine. Um, yes. So for, for me, um, every situation is different. Sometimes I deal with the situation right there. Sometimes I'm required to hold on till I really think things through before acting. Sometimes I'm mm -hmm. quiet for a while just to give my wife the idea that Look, you've done something wrong. I need you to <laughs> to reason this out. So every every situation every situation for me basically um, differs. Um, I can't say particularly that this is how I did it, but I, but I can say that most of the time I'm usually just quiet and just give it some time before I talk about what happened. Yeah. That's that's okay. that's how I do it now. Yeah. Thank you, Shay. Okay. Wow, well, we have a man who talks more when he's when there are conflicts. Wow, Tarun. And does Lena talk less? And Charles says he talks less. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, Tarun. I don't know if you've unmuted. No, uh, Lena is saying uh, she. I sleep more. I don't talk more. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> right. In fact, so, she also talks more. We we just yeah interact a lot when we are in conflict. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. That's 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 nice. Okay. So so there are different ways that we respond. Okay. So in conflicts, something that generally happens is um, our responses or the way that we maybe could be in a place where we are angry we are hurt or we are offended okay and that's uh, that's a normal defense mechanism when someone says something to you criticizes you the flesh comes up and says hey defend yourself 
okay and that defense comes at this at the at the uh, in the way of an offense or a hurt or anger now these are normal uh, responses however what we need yes charles yes charles Thank you so much. Um, someone was sharing with us. We were like men who were talking, like men talk. And then he told us that if you want to lose your, your battle, when you're talking to a lady or a woman, shout. Shout at them. Then you will have lost. They will have won you. And it has guided me. And I have now won a lot of battles. Whenever something comes which is boiling, me, I don't shout. I, I don't talk a lot. I keep quiet and I find myself winning. But the moment I shout, I will have lost. And it has worked for me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I always give... Um give this example to uh, you know to to my counseling couples i say you know when someone is angry it is like talking to someone who is um who is under alcohol intoxication okay because when you're intoxicated you lose your head you lose your judgment you lose your reasoning and you're saying something that you are not aware of. And being in a position of anger is the same, right? You are in such a heightened sense of emotion that you lose judgment of what you're saying or what you're thinking. And the advice that I give, you know, the spouses is at that point of time, just like Charles said, you know, simmer down do not talk to them it's like talking to someone who is intoxicated who's inebriated right so do not do not get engaged in a conversation when someone is angry or of or or you know in in a heightened sense because it's just going to worsen it's just going to add up to the conflict in itself okay so when when we were coming what we were coming to say is that during conflicts it is true that uh, the response is anger, the response is offense, the response is hurt. Now, uh, the feeling of ang anger, like I said, is a normal and a natural emotion. It is something, it's, our emotions are like barometers. You know, it's, it, it tells you where, you, where it is, it, it's going off limits. That's what your emotions are meant to do. And it is God given. So it's perfectly okay to have the feeling of being angry. What can become sinful is when we permit our anger to, um, to, to take over us, to control us. When our anger becomes destructive, when we act on that anger, that later we, we we begin to see that what we what we did has been painful or has been hurtful. So it is a normal emotion, okay? Anger, sadness, all of that are normal emotions, and it is okay that we feel angry. But what we do with the anger, how we express it, how we uh, is is it is it be, being constructive? or has it taken on a destructive phase is what really matters over here. So we must be careful that uh, we do not let it out. We do not uh, um, lose it. We do not uh, lose control over it. So before it loses that place of control, we need to pause. We need to Time out. We need to ensure that we have brought it to a place of stop so that we can go back, reflect, figure out what is going on inside of us, and then come in and deal with it. Okay, that was a question. So, is there a good anger and a bad anger? Okay, I, I wouldn't define it as a good anger and a bad anger, but there are times that you need to have the anger that will spur you into an action like for example you're walking down the street and let's say you see um, somebody abusing someone okay maybe a man abusing a child okay 
there is that sense of anger that will help spurs you into action to help or to restrain or to give some kind of support if there isn't or that there, there can be that anger that can come up to bash up the one who is who is hurting hurting the child right so it it really matters how you channelize your anger so the anger is an emotion that will come but how you channelize it is what really matters is it used for something that is constructive or is it moved on to something that is destructive so channelizing the anger is 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 important if you look at jesus you know in the temple there was anger there right anger for the fact that the house of god was being violated right By, uh, was, was being misused and as you know he expressed what his anger was over there okay but but make a note over there that jesus was you know did express that anger without bringing about hurt to another but expressed it in order to protect what was what was uh, given or what what he wanted to preserve okay as as the temple of god so other examples that i can look up with let's say um, you know a mother or a, or a parent who finds their child being abused okay maybe physically sexually by by somebody there needs to be a sense of anger so that you can respond in a way to help and protect your child or protect children around so there are ways that you channelize this anger into something that is constructive or something that is that is destructive okay so if the conflict were to um uh, to get you to a place of anger uh often we do know that if if we aren't in control of it it can lead to different ways of expressions which could be abuse which could be aggression which could be um in different forms it could be either through language it could be through behavior it could be through words right so ensuring that we come to a place of a pause and uh stopping the argument then and there and coming back um uh, later to address the matter so if you do see anger pause press the pause button and come back to resolve it we will be looking at um steps of conflict resolution in our next class and um uh, but but we we're going to we're going to probably stop at at uh, at at a place to understand that in anger we do not um proceed on dealing with an issue but but pausing it then and there so that um you know we can come back at a later point of time to address it the the other thing we need to be careful when we are in conflict is to not avoid very often uh, i and i think a lot of times when there is a conflict because we do not know how a conflict may progress we may avoid even discussions or bringing it back uh, um into some form of a resolution and what happens is when we avoid it will fester it will rot it will decay it's like you know you have um um maybe some for example you have a rotten apple at a place where there are good apples it's going to affect the rest if you don't take that out if you avoid it and leave it there it is going to grow on the rest of it okay so a uh, a uh, conflict that is avoided or not spoken about is going to fester and those suppressed emotions will again lead to a greater issue and it can lead again to a breakdown of communication so certain principles when we are angry you know press the pause button if we are extremely angry do not avoid a conversation come back at some point of time when things have calmed when things have simmered to be able to address that what are other ways you know sometimes uh, it's it's just not avoidance that we do there are other ways that uh, there are other unhelpful responses during a conflict so some of them are of course being aggressive being aggressive is you know shouting and using abusive language throwing power against the other 
so much so that you know the other one is weakened to even respond so aggression is an unhelpful way uh, suppressing your feelings bottling up feelings not bringing it out for an open discussion to resolve it uh, can again be a very unhel unhelpful method there are certain approaches that we may use that um, uh, that uh, derail you know uh, resolving the conflict like for example um, you know when when you're asked is is anything wrong I, it looks like something is upset you say no i'm fine nothing is wrong and i think that's a response that many women give right nothing is there anything wrong no nothing right and uh, uh, so so those are indirect approaches or when uh, you refuse to uh, maybe you know probably uh, when you're upset banging banging the the door or kicking the dog these are all indirect approaches of resolving conflicts right but it needs to be bought out in a healthy way um, other unhelpful methods is not talking about the conflict to the person who is involved or to, the, to your spouse but then maybe talking uh, it out to somebody else maybe friends or or others or parents that's uh, that's seeking that help and approval from somebody else so generally you know when there are conflicts that occur when you do discuss it with especially uh, your friends or your siblings or your parents you are going to get validation and approval from them because they are yours right um, very rarely would you actually have someone who uses wisdom and says you know uh, go back and discuss this with, with with your spouse without me giving you any forms of a, um, a form or any any idea as such okay another unhelpful response is being unwilling to forgive and holding on to those um, offense and to that hurt and not letting go of of the pain that seems to be in there the last one being the silent treatment not talking at all okay refusing to communicate at all so these are all unhealthy ways of how conflicts are uh, are resolved we are called to be able to engage in a way that is mature now uh, why does it become difficult is because there are a lot of emotions that get involved in dealing with a uh, with with a conflict so like i like we said you know emotions are god given and they are like barometers that helps us to figure out what is going wrong so how do we engage in in a good and a healthy way is being able to describe how you are feeling and what you want and what you need so often when we are having a conflict it's you know i've observed that the content is what is actually uh, discussed about rarely do we go in to say how we are feeling about it you know like like i took the example in our previous class you know suppose uh, your spouse comes back late we are all talking about you know you came back late you're always late uh, you don't care about me um, you know you have so many other things to do and that's what we think we're engaging in right maturely but if we could describe how we feel rather than saying what 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 i just said which is a very poor example of how you would engage maturely would be saying you know it hurts me when I'm waiting up for you, uh, I really look forward to have a call from you. In that way, I understand that you're thinking of me or that you respect me or that you know that I'm waiting up for you. You know, so you have expressed what you feel, you know, that, you know, I feel uncared for. You've expressed what you want. You know, it would be nice if you call me because it makes me feel that you care you care about me that i can feel secure in your love so when you describe what you feel what you want and what you need and not what is going wrong or what your partner should be feeling it helps in engaging in a honest way so honestly coming up in sharing and confronting the emotions that you may be going through is a very helpful way in dealing with emotions uh, dealing with with conflict so when you engage 
look more into expressing what you feel, what you want, and what you need, rather than the content of what has been going on. Okay. Another way of engaging, of course, is ensuring that you do not criticize or put them down, put the person down, or have any forms of insults or blaming or um, uh, saying anything that will put them at a place of defense. Engaging with in uh, engaging healthily also means to take the current issue, staying in the present, and keeping away from the urge of bringing up older issues from the past. Okay, if there are issues that's coming up from the past, it it just means that the earlier conflicts have not been resolved. Right? If you're not able to stay in the here and now, and many things from earlier has been coming in, it just it just shows that uh, earlier forms of resolution has not really worked or, or it, it has it has still been unresolved. It's still an unfinished business. Okay, So engaging maturely needs to happen in a way where you come in tune with your own feelings, also understand the emotions of the other as they are expressing it, and coming to a place of um, uh, following certain steps of resolving conflicts, which we will be talking about in our next class in detail. Okay, Now, if while you're working through these that we've said, or even the steps that we're going to be talking about next, if you find that it is hard to do so, um, it is important to get support and help from anyone who could um, objectively help you walk through the process of conflict resolution. Sometimes when the emotions are run extremely high, we, we, we close our eyes on being objective, okay? And being in a place of willing to hear what the other person is saying. So in a case such as that, it, it's always helpful and good to use the help of a counselor or a pastor or someone who you trust who can be as an intermediary help, like an inter, like, like a mediator who can help in, uh, not a mediator, a facilitator who can help in bringing out information or bringing out emotions through the situation of the conflict. Okay, so next week we are going to be looking at uh, seven ways or seven steps on how um, they are quite simple in itself, and it is something that that uh, that we see in scripture that we can apply as we uh, look at ways of how we resolve conflicts. Okay. All right. Uh, is there? We have another two or three minutes. Um, is are there any questions? If not, we can close with a word of prayer. Uh, first, I just want to yes, say uh, thank you, thank you very much for <clears throat> what you're teaching us. Because uh, yeah, it's an even though some of us are not married yet, but it's helping us to to be prepared for for that for for, for when we get married. Personally, um, I, I usually when 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 in conflict or when <clears throat> someone offends me, uh, I kind of shut the person out. I not shut 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 them out completely, but I'll avoid the situation. So I'll I'll not speak talk about it, but I'll find a way of dealing with the person so that we don't end up in the same way. So either not seeing seeing them as much as I used to, or talk to them as much as I used to, or just like move out, go somewhere else, or find other friends. So yeah, what they're teaching us, it's uh, it is help, helpful. Thank you so much. Great, thank you, Mangi. So I think uh, we we will we'll throw a lot more light on that. Um, you know, so is it okay? Is it right for us to? Um, you know, maybe maybe we don't shut the person off, but we shut down. And sometimes <clears throat> when we shut down, we find that we are lost in our own thoughts of anger and offense that creates um, um, uh, creates certain thoughts, disrespectful thoughts about the person we are in conflict with, leading us to be in a place of unforgiveness and a lack of love. So as we go through those initial steps, uh, when we're going through the next uh, class where we are looking at those steps, 
it will help us to come to a place of being prepared within ourselves because um, in conflicts we first of all have to deal with our own hearts <clears throat> first um, and and our rightness with God first before we can go we can be in a place of actually um, bringing up bringing it up in discussion with the other so thank you thank you for that okay uh, Charles, you asked a question. Is there a way of toning down? The matter we are talking about is itchy and needs more concentration. Is there a way of toning down? So I think what you meant is uh, when somebody is angry, is there a way that you can calm down is what I understand you've asked. So something that I do with, with uh, couples is um, especially where, where in couples where um, uh, the intensity of uh, the emotional intensity is very high and that they are able to recognize it both the couples are able to recognize that the environment the the the, the place is getting extremely intense um, what 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 I help them do is I I say one of you needs to take the initiative of, I mean, the speed of discussing the topics and chapters. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, is this is this going too fast? Charles, is it going too fast? Yes, to me, to me, um, that's why I'm requesting to me. Because oh, everything okay. is lovely, everything you talk is real matter, it's content, it's deep, so uh, that, that is my request. Okay, I understand, Charles. Okay, so what I do is, you know, the next two uh, sessions, we're just going to be dealing with this. So um, I can come back if there are specifically certain things that you would want me to repeat. I can definitely do that in our uh, next in our next week because I've kept two hours for our uh, for the, for the next section because I I know it it is quite heavy. There are there are many things. So yes, I will definitely do that. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Okay. All right, so um, shall we shall we close? And uh, may I request uh, somebody, Anita? Could you kindly uh, close with a word of prayer, Anita? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we give you glory for the precious time, Allah, Father. Father Lord, thank you for the new insights, O oh Lord, Father Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that we could touch to the issues, O oh Lord Father. Almighty oh Lord Father, untouched. Almighty oh Lord Father, unspoken, O oh Lord. Almighty oh Lord. We give you glory, O oh Lord Father, Lord Jesus, that there would not be any area in our lives, O oh Lord Father, in darkness, O oh Lord. Almighty oh Lord Father, that your light, O oh Lord Father, would bring out. Almighty oh Lord Father, Lord Jesus, uh, would uh, strip away, O oh Lord Father, whatever is not right in us, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, thank you for teaching us through ma'am, O oh Lord. We bless her, O oh Lord, Father, give you glory, O oh Lord, Father. Father, Lord, we ask for wisdom, O oh Lord, Father, for each one of us, O oh Lord, Father, to apply all that what we have learned here, O oh Lord. We give you glory and praise, praise, O oh Lord, Father. Thank you for the precious time and the mighty and match the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thank you, everybody. Have a blessed week ahead. We'll meet you next week. God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.